I do not need to know what your baby daddy Pookie did last weekend and why y'all was fighting. I don't need to know that. Hey y'all, and thank you for coming back to my channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Hey y'all, we ain't finna waste no time. I know what y'all here, y'all know what I'm here to do. So this is episode two of the ultimate guide to freight dispatching, and this video is gonna be called the 10 steps to building your freight dispatching empire. And just remember, y'all ain't gonna get quality content like this nowhere else on YouTube. It means a lot to me when y'all are telling me like you're able to get on this journey or you're even thinking about getting on this journey just because you're listening to my words. So keep commenting. This is a community where we help each other, we love each other, and we nurture each other through this growing process of becoming a freight dispatcher. You are only as good as the foundation that you plant in any business, but especially as a freight dispatcher. So structuring your business is always gonna be the most important thing that you can do. So the first thing you're gonna do is think of a business name. Of course, you wanna make this very authentic to who you are, but keep in mind, you don't wanna do anything that is outrageous. You have to keep in mind that like this is a very professional business that you're getting into. You're only as good as the names and the effort that you put out into it. So when you're coming up with your business name, it's like naming your baby. You're not gonna give your, your kid just any name. So make sure you sit there and you think about your business name and keep it interesting. It could be lighthearted. Uh, it could be something like my name is Share Rock Logistics. That's something very specific to me. Just understand that the name is a very huge foundational aspect of you building your freight dispatching business. You want your business name to stand out, be bold, and say a lot about you as a business owner and your character. All right, y'all, so step number two is your articles of organization. So you're gonna either be filing as an LLC, you would be filing as an S Corp or sole proprietorship. Those are things that you do need to do independent research on. Each different filing comes with different benefits, but you do have to have some type of legal organization filing. Um, simply because this is how you're going to file your taxes for your business. Um, this is non-negotiable. You have to have some type of or article of organization. So when you're filing as an LLC, I chose my company works. And the only reason I really chose that one is because they have amazing customer service. Um, they were able to answer all questions via email and they have like a, the cheapest um, LLC rates to get started. And it was literally like a step-by-step -step walkthrough. You didn't even need an agent. Step number three. Y'all better be listening to all three of these uh, pieces of advice that I gave y'all so far. File for your EIN. So that is basically like the social security number. That's a lot to say. Y'all know I ain't good with all of them S's, but for your, it's a social security number for your business, but they call it an EIN. Um, with that, I have heard outrageous, crazy things that people are paying like 150 to $200 to file for their EIN number. Y'all, you would be mind blown if I told you that it is actually completely free, meaning zero dollars. All you have to do is take your 10 minutes and go over to the irs.gov website. In the right hand corner, there's gonna be a search bar and you just type in EIN. It's gonna take you straight to the website um, where you would complete the application for filing. Now, with that being said, you get your EIN number back immediately if you choose the PDF format, which is what I suggest. Um, but with that, they only accept the filings Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and that is on Eastern time. So keep all of those factors in mind when you're going to apply for your EIN number, but please stop paying people y'all because you don't have to. Keep that money in your pocket because you're gonna need it when you start your journey. All right, so I guess we own one, two, three, four. I'm pretty sure we had question above. The fourth most important thing, you need to make sure you open a business bank account. Do not allow the money that you make from freight dispatching to go into your personal bank account. Um, I just want y'all to keep in mind that eventually all people in logistics are going to have to hit that point where we have to do taxes quarterly and you want to keep everything completely separated between personal and business. So option number one, of course, is going to be looking into your local credit union. Um, your local credit union always offers the best deals and best rates when it comes to business bank accounts and you never know if they're interested in your business idea, you can definitely try to apply for a loan as well. My second top choice would be Chase. Chase just has all the benefits. Um, they're number one in the, the United States for a reason. They have amazing benefits that come along with their business bank accounts. And if you're a student as well, that comes with a whole different list of benefits. All right, and this last one, I don't personally have an account with them, but I've heard nothing but good things. The last is Blue Vine. It's 100% online. It's an all online bank account. Um, they have a 2% cash back option. 
There's uh, no minimum balance that you have to have. They accept cash deposits. And most importantly, there's no maintenance fee. And now, now y'all probably wondering, why is this Michelle Obama memoir sitting right here? Well, it don't got no better place to be, but in my hands, I absolutely love Michelle Obama. She's always been one of my idols. Um, if you look at the textbook definition of what a black woman is, I feel like that is Michelle Obama. And right now I'm in a phase of life where just trying to, I'm trying to align with the people that I aspire to be. And I know y'all like how I be dropping them gems. So make sure y'all are hitting that like button. Make sure y'all subscribe, comment, and start sharing the videos. The more people we get to see the videos, the more content I can put out. So help me out, I'll help you out. All right, number five. So with this one, it's really easy, honestly. Make sure you have a business email address and a business phone number. Once again, as I was talking about the business bank accounts, you just wanna keep everything personal and business completely separated. That's my advice to anybody. With the business number, don't necessarily think you have to go and get a whole new business phone right off rip. Um, not everybody got the finances to just go get all of the stuff that you may need. So. I do want to let you know that you can use one of those phone apps um, like Grasshopper or Google Voice, but just be mindful that those apps do not tell you that somebody's calling through the app. It'll just show up as an unknown number. So when you use that option, like personally, when I was using that option, I was missing a lot of missed calls. I was getting a lot of missed calls from brokers and other important people like carriers that I was needing to communicate with, but I didn't know that they were calling through the app. So for me, I had to get a totally different business phone, but if you're good at answering your phone, just get a business number through the business app. All right, so this is the fun part because you can let your creative juices flow. And everything that you do from this point in branding is a direct reflection on you and how you want your business to perform. So number six, we're gonna start off with logo. Make sure that it looks professional. You are gonna be putting that logo on every piece of documentation you send out. You're gonna put that logo on your website, it, it, on your social media pages, it goes everywhere. So make sure you get a very nice logo. Now with that being said, you can create it yourself. Um, I've used Canva several times to create logos, um, just to start off. But when you're ready and you can make that investment, I would say go over to Fiverr. Um, you can adjust your budget to be whatever it is that you're wanting to spend on a logo at that time. And with that being said, they create, you get like uh, professional graphic designers to create your logo for you. Um, so once you make money your first week of freight dispatching, take that money and reinvest it back into your business by getting a better logo through Fiverr. It changed the whole game for me. Trust lucky number seven. Once again, we're gonna keep that same thing. Keeping business and personal completely separated, even with social media, okay? That is so important because as a, a prospective carrier that's looking to hire you as my freight dispatcher, I do not need to know what your baby daddy Kooky did last weekend and why y'all was fighting. I don't need to know that. So make sure you keep your personal and your business pages completely separate. Now, for the people that are not so tech savvy or not really into social media, I'm going to push for you to go to Facebook. Um, Facebook is really outlined clearly and you're able to make all the uploads you need and you can make a really professional looking business Facebook page. And you really want all of these social medias, the website, your Facebook and Instagram, because it creates like a sense of security for the people that are trying to acquire your services. It basically puts a face to your business. In the world we live in now, people are always gonna go check your website first before they purchase anything from you or utilize you for any service. So with that being said, make sure your pages also look extremely professional. Um, take your time, y'all. Um, you can do all of these things yourself. I've created almost every piece of resources that y'all see by myself. Um, it just took me some time. Take your time, get it right the first time, and really put that money back into your business. As soon as you start getting money coming in, putting it back into your business. And I promise that strategy that I use is what helped me elevate as a freight dispatcher. Um, and just remember, social media is a great place for networking, you get to find local people, you get to post about the loans that you booked and how happy you were. Like, Make sure you're utilizing social media because we're in 2023 and if you ain't got no good social media presence, you probably ain't gonna get a lot of business. Also y'all, if you need somewhere to create your website, make sure y'all go over to Squarespace. 
Um, they make it so easy to create your website and they also have agents there that can assist you as well. And if you're needing help creating your website and you wanna go through Squarespace, make sure you go to the link down below. Number eight. You need a business plan. I always tell people, make sure you stick to the plan. And this is a part of your top 10 things that you're going to need to really build an empire. Um, I had a very strong business plan. So make sure you're including your executive summary. Um, you need to have your company description in there. You need to have your marketing analysis and also the organization and management of your company. Um, those are the bare minimum things that you need to have in your business plan, but once you write it out, just stick to that plan and you're gonna be unstoppable. And I know this next one might not be important to everybody, but number nine is extremely important to me, and that is mindset. Now, you have to have a positive mindset going into any business, but especially freight dispatching. And just remember that the tongue is the most powerful tool that you have. It took me a month and a half to get my first carrier, and he was a box truck carrier. It took me an additional two months to get my first 18-wheeler carrier. I only took the box truck carrier so I could start get it, getting some experience and exposure so I could transfer over to 18-wheeler carriers. I just never gave up. I, I remember one time I caught myself being like, man, I ain't never gonna get a carrier. It's just not working out. But you know what that same night I did? I sat down and sent out 50 different emails and made, the next day I made 25 different phone calls trying to recruit. I understand that that's honestly the hardest part of becoming a freight dispatcher. And people just don't understand that it's so hard because you're asking another business to basically, you're telling them as a freight dispatcher, put your kids clothes money in my hands, put your housing money in my hands, put the way that you feed your children in my hands. That's a lot, that's a huge responsibility that you're asking to take over from a carrier, that's their business. And you are now in charge of how their business makes money. So you can't get down about it, you gotta just keep going, you gotta stay positive, and just know everything you think can happen. So think positive, happy thoughts, and positive, happy things are gonna come back to you, baby. Trust me. Pump, pump, pump it up. All right, we use NDAs. If y'all don't know what that means, that's 10. The last thing we're gonna talk about, number 10, is trucking lingo. Now, I'm not gonna go over everything because it's a lot that you have to learn. So make sure y'all is tuning back in to check out these videos because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna name drop a couple of the lingo terms as well. So, number one is going to be the MC authority. Y'all, that is only the documentation that says that the carrier is able to pick up freight and deliver freight. That's all the MC authority is. The next term is a broker. A broker is like, y'all both gonna be the middleman. A freight dispatcher and a broker are both in the middle between the carrier and the shipper, but the broker works for the shipper. So y'all are both trying to negotiate the best rate for the load um, to get picked up and delivered. Um, but you usually work with brokers the most as a freight dispatcher and just don't trust them. Never forget, you'll never know how much they got paid out for that load. They're only gonna tell you a, a percentage of what the actual payout was. So always negotiate for more because you, you'll never know how much they received for even taking the load. All right, so the next term is a carrier. Um, I know people say carrier slash owner operator and technically the terms are interchangeable but they have different meanings so a carrier is anyone who owns that operating authority meaning that their company can pick up freight and deliver freight an owner operator is a specific category of carrier who not only has their operating authority but they also physically drive that truck from pickup to delivery so they own the authority and they operate the truck but when you are recruiting, you only want to say carriers because you don't want to make the carriers who don't drive their trucks think you're only looking for owner operators just because you use the wrong term. So the word is carry, remember that. Okay, the next thing is a factoring company. Um, this has been asked a lot. Honestly, y'all, a factoring company is nothing more than a financial institution for logistics. Um, it's just a bank for people who own trucks or are any form of logistics. That's all the factory company really is. Um, and they make it easier to access the payments that you get from each broker. So instead of having to wait like whatever the um, standard days to pay is and trunking, you would get your money within 72 hours with a factoring company. And it's usually set at a very low fee. So about 2.9% is what um, I usually see. 
Um, it is not a requirement of each carrier to have a factoring company, but it does come with a lot of back uh, but it does come with a lot of benefits and I do suggest that people look into getting a factoring company for sure. And the last term is going to be shipper. So a shipper is just the person who has the freight that needs to be moved. Um, you nine times out of 10 as a freight dispatcher aren't gonna be talking directly to a shipper because you can't. We we'll talk about that in another video, make sure y'all is tuning in. But you will not be talking to a shipper directly, you will always be going through a broker. All right y'all, so that is a wrap. Now I can't sing. But I was, yeah, I knew where I was trying to go with that. Mariah, you, you know you wanna sign me. But anyway, that's a wrap for episode two. The 10 steps to building your ultimate freight dispatching empire. Yay, we made it to episode one. You at the end of episode two, and you better be tuning in for episode three because I'm going to go into a whole in depth tutorial of how to use DAT the load board. I know y'all been wanting to see this, so I'm going to give y'all what y'all want to see. And if you are confused about any of these steps that I mentioned in this video, please comment down below and I will get to you. And if you feel like this video has helped you out and you have a better understanding of freight dispatching within these first two episodes, make sure you go watch episode one. Go ahead and drop that four leaf clover in the comments so I can know that you understand. What was I getting ready to say? What did I say? Um, you told me to do... I said, uh, we're gonna talk to them about... Mm. Don't worry about it. Two people with real active minds trying to remember some shit. Go ahead. Yeah, hold on, you said... Thank y'all. I love y'all. Be blessed and have a great day. Fucking end it. <laughs>